What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the PhDJ podcast with your hosts. It's me, Joe Bunn, and What's on the other on, end, Joe? There how are he you, is. man? Still, look here. at you looking all scruffy this morning. Scruffy. I actually shaved. I just shaved. <sighs> Kelly's like, "What are you shaving for?" I said, "I got, I got a podcast coming up." Yeah, and some I, people I, watch I us on video. Sweaty. Nah, I wouldn't say. Well, it's sweaty is true. Uh, yeah, yeah, sweaty, scruffy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Been doing a little work outside <laughs> as the sun came up to try and beat the heat. I I've, I did a run over an hour ago, and I'm still, still sweating. basically sweating. Like yeah. I, even though I took a shower already, I'm still like, yeah, it's it's that. Rough. But this is it for us anyway. Mm -hmm. if you look at the forecast; uh, it's going to break, and then this weekend is going to be a little bit chillier. So I don't know. This might be the last last rasp rough. Yeah, who knows? Maybe not, yeah. maybe not down here. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a little different in Jersey. Um, Mike, tell me this. Uh, speaking of weekends, so we're recording this the a couple of days before Labor Day weekend. Are you doing double, triple? What are you doing? I have a uh, Friday gig, Saturday off, Sunday gig, Monday off. So kind of like every other day. Yeah. Mm, not bad. Yeah, I think and my sister and her husband are coming down to the shore. They usually come down uh, Labor Day weekend. So oh, last cool. year I worked all I did. I think I did all four days. So I barely I, I got to see them like for breakfast one morning. That was it. So at least Saturday I get to hang out. With my I do babysitter. remember that. You. I think yeah. you did. You did a quadruple. I was, I was bitter as hell. I mean, I love working, but then like, like Kelly, there's a band that we follow yeah. and they're playing Friday night and Kelly's like, I might go see them. I'm like, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Like, <laughs> right. tell me the next morning how good a time, but don't like, po don't be posting pictures and texting right. me like, what a great time. I don't want to know while I'm working. I just, I want to believe while I'm working that everybody is home miserable and lonely that's it you know what you know? I'll, i always post around memorial day i'm like if you're at the beach right now i hope you're sunburnt and hung over yeah, exactly that's not how, that i'm bitter but not, i'm not bitter how, at all no no yeah, no. Yeah, no i love yeah. i love my job man this is part of the job you know it's exactly. part of the territory exactly. how about you busy weekend uh i think i'm all friday and i got weddings on saturday sunday there you go yep and then probably monday we'll either cook out or go out on the lake or something yeah take that boat out a few more times Cool. Well, um, so Mike, I wanted to um, touch on a topic that's been kind of sitting on our uh, list of things to talk about uh, from our PhDJ graduate slash um, really smart online uh, guru, Aaron Abramson. We know Aaron. I love Aaron. I Thanks. actually owe him a phone call today. He said he would, he would offer me some advice about something, so I got to oh, call him. Uh well, he's usually, his advice is usually pretty spot on. Spot on. Uh, yeah. Exactly. He's a smart kid. And uh, anyway, he was just asking in a, um, I guess, in the comments. By the way, guys, if you ever want to, you know, Mike and I to talk about something, uh, the best place to leave it, Mike, wouldn't you agree, is probably in the comments under where we post the video or either just yeah, DM, definitely. DM yeah. us. Or, or, yeah, instant message one of yep. us, DM us, yeah. Yep. So anyway, Aaron uh, asked about software needed to run a multi-op company. And I think this, so don't turn it off all of a sudden if you're a single operator, because I think this stuff is going to apply to everybody. But the software, or, or maybe just, let, let's call it, Mike, the tools or, or things. Technical that, tools. Yeah. So technical in other, in other words, not equipment. We're not talking about gear out in the field, which I think we've Correct. already done in, in this podcast, but kind of internal stuff that we use in the office and, and things like that. So, uh, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind, obviously, is DJ Event Planner. And this is one of those situations where no wonder Troy doesn't pay for us to, <laughs> uh, to be a sponsor because we talk about the guy all the time. But you and I both strong advocates, right, DJ Event Planner? I mean... Yes, a hundred percent. I mean, yeah. What? what well, let, before we talk about that, Mike, and the things that we do and don't use on DJ Event Planner, what what were you using prior to that? Do you remember? Yeah, sure. We had a, a program that had been written specifically for us in FileMaker. Oh. Um, and, uh, you know, listen, it did everything we needed it to do at the time. It wasn't connected to the Internet at all because this thing was written for us back in 1993, pretty much pre-Internet. Uh, but Some internally, -DOS type yeah, right exactly. But internally, man, it did everything we possibly wanted it to do. Yeah. And I remember when I first heard about DJ Event Planner, I actually flew Troy. Ackerman out to New Jersey to spend a day with them wow. because it was a pretty monumental change for Elite Entertainment. And one of the things I, I really insisted upon was I wanted him to be able to migrate all of our data over. Uh, and he he basically wrote code to do that. Whoa. Uh, and, and I know he can, you know, I know he can migrate from any of the other, mm -hmm. you know, popular. He's already written code to do that. But he wrote um, 
an algorithm or whatever it is specifically to, to migrate our data over. And, and to me, it's still important to this day. You know, we'll get a referral from 20 years ago and we can look it up and see where the event took place and what DJ was on it and how much they paid. And, you know, now that we've been using a DJ event planner, I think it's coming up on 10 years now. Maybe it's not quite that long, but it's I know it's a long time. Yeah. You know that those situations become less and less. But there are still situations where we have to look stuff up pre DJ event planner. So that was a critical part of our our, you know, switching over. Mike, can you go back even further and remember what y'all did at Star? Yeah, we had it was a similar situation. I don't remember what the program yeah, was written in, curious. but we had a program that had been written specifically for us. And, yeah. and, you know, it allowed us to print out cover letters and print out contracts yeah. and print that, you know, the whole key to whatever database you're using is that you enter this, the information once and you can your DJs can access it in one format and you can print contracts in another and do form letters, which nowadays emails. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's the whole point of a database. And, and yeah, we had this program that was written for us back then and, yeah. and was filled with bugs. I remember that, but yeah. it worked. I mean, it did its job, you know? I, you know, you and I came up a little bit differently because it was just, when I started, I just, uh, you know, had parents that love records and then, you know, met this one guy in my town and I was kind of this single operator for, uh, I guess, really through my teenage years and all through college. And so I remember I mean, the, the original way I used to book shows, I would send a contract out in the mail and everything, but I had one of those big staples desk calendars. Right. You remember those right. that sit on yeah, the desk? Sure. And, yeah. and they had the big squares so you could write everything. So I'd write like, you know, Mike Smith, uh, Phi Gamma Beta House, you know, uh, what I used to play 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. That was my that was my frat slot. Right. Um, uh, $500 you know, whatever. And like a few right. details, oh, it's a semi form or it's just an open frat party or whatever. But that right. was how I booked shows. And then I think once I added maybe one guy, I was a big Excel guy. I went to, to more of a spreadsheet and I thought that was super high tech. And then we were on, so y'all never made a, the route through DJ Intelligence, correct? No, no. The first switch I did was to DJ Event Planner. Right, right. Yeah. So we were on DJ Intelligence for years and then, uh, of course, been And on. was that web-based at the time? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was, um, I don't remember exactly why we switched because I'm, I'm fairly, I'm fairly certain like the DJs could log in and see their shows and things like that. I, I just feel right. like. Uh, DJ event planner just had more functionality. And I think right. we've been on that now four years, five years. Well, that's why people ask me to compare. Yeah. And I, I say I can't because I've never used the others. Right. I mean, the others might be just as full functioning. But the one thing I can say is that DJ, we have we've never had a situation where it's like, I wish DJ event planner did this and it mm -hmm. didn't do it. Usually if we say that, it's just that we haven't figured out that DJ event How planner do does that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, we there's been very... I have very few instances where that even comes up because it's so intuitive that mm -hmm. if you say, I wish DJ event planner do, did this, you can figure out how to, how to do it. Oh yeah. You know? Or at the very least ask on like the Facebook group, right on the forum, ask yeah. Troy or, <laughs> you know, you know, who's a wizard, uh, Brian Hines over in Charlotte. Brian Hines is yeah. actually the guy who turned me on to DJ Brian event planner. Brian Hines knows more about DJ event planner than the guy that built. Yeah, I, I actually felt bad about it. There was, there, again, this goes back years ago, yeah. similar to the way you brought me down for a day of consulting. Sure, sure. Brian had brought me down for a day of consulting and we're sitting at his desk and I was like, you know, walk yeah. me through your sales process. And he opens up the, and I'm like, what is this that you're using? And, oh, and it, it almost became him consulting me. And I'm like, wait a right. minute, this guy's paying yeah, right. me to be here, <laughs> but can I look at that thing again? And, and you're writing him the, a refund check. Before right. You that left. was the trip that made me call Troy Ackerman because yeah. I was so, I was so kind of blown away by this technology, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. He, he really, um, he, Brian's a good dude. And every once in a while, you know, I'll be like, man, will it do this? And he'll get back right. to me before anybody yeah. else will. So, right. uh, luckily I hadn't blown him up too much. I think he, he hasn't gotten sick of me yet. I hit him he's up. He still about, takes phone calls. And yeah. Words. Yeah. Once yeah, a month. Yeah. He's good for once a month. That's good. That's good. Um, but anyway, so l let's talk about a few things on here, Mike, cause I'm just kind of curious as to how you use it versus how we use it and really how anybody listening can use it or does use it. Um, are you using, for example, booking helpers? Do you ever use that section? Oh, all the time. 
Do yeah. you really? So yeah. kind of without, I mean. So I, the advantage of booking helpers is that you can um, pre-schedule, I hope I'm saying that correctly, sure. a number of different functions. So in other words, when a client it, gives us a deposit, we use the booking helper and that sends them the email. It sends our DJ an email to, saying, telling him you've been booked on this date. It sets a number of future emails to that client in motion uh, or schedules them, I guess is the right way to say it. So yeah, the booking helper function is great because it basically with one button you can do it, it, a it bunch basically of for the people that are listening that are tech savvy i guess it's that ifttt like if this then that if i yeah. think i'm saying that right so right. you know mike sends out a contract like he's saying it sets off a chain reaction of things so you don't have to manually click 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 and that's that's one of the things that i've been meaning to set up for years because exactly what mike says is is what we're having to do you know i'll send out a contract then i'll send out and again, all this is still through DJ Event Planner, so it's still very simple, drop down, drop down. But um, that is one of the things that's very, very nice. Uh, you, you and I are literally sitting here sweating. I, I'm still this. just, yeah, I'm yeah. still dabbing my head for those watching, <laughs> for those not watching on video. That's what Joe was just commenting sure on. Sure, this is so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I only did three miles we are. too. It's not like I did a marathon. Right, I did right. three miles out in this heat, and uh, I'm still sweating. Yeah, yeah, we're but committed, whatever. folks. We're up and yeah. early here there recording you. for you. So, um. So I know we both do this, and I think it's been um, uh, instrumental in a lot or, or helpful in a lot of different ways for us, Mike, is, is automated emails. I mean, from upselling the, you know, photo booth or the up lights, you know, a trickle of emails leading up to their event to uh, making sure people have made their final payment, making sure they've done their online planner. I, I assume you guys are the same. And right? and also on the on the reverse end of it, reminding our DJs, you yep. know, it's six weeks in advance. Yep. It's time to call this client. Same. Uh, that type of thing. So, yeah, there's there, the automated emails are fantastic. I think I've mentioned on this before. We basically have a countdown to somebody's wedding every 50 days. They get an email from us. Oh, okay. so let's Let's say let, so. Let's say you sign up for your wedding exactly a year in advance. In 15 days, 350 days, your wedding is coming up in 350 days. That's awesome. And then 50 days later, your wedding is coming up in 300 days. Your wedding is coming up in. And I've literally seen brides post online and say, "Hey, my wedding is 200 days away." You know oh, how we know cool. that? I got this email from Elite Entertainment. That's cool. So I think, listen, brides anticipate their wedding day. So I think getting emails like that mm -hmm. is fun, and you know, it's just a, a nice poke and a nice reminder. Mm -hmm. But in those emails, yes, like you just said, we mention, "Hey, did you?" You know we have photo boots and did you know we offer uh video screens if you're looking for video at your wedding did you and we we get a a fair amount not a deluge but we get a trickle of of upgrades because of those emails so i think it's just good to constantly keep in touch with your clients do you um mike have you ever had somebody say you're you're wearing me out or you're blowing me up too much not a not a future bride. I mean, when we send out a newsletter sure. and we do that monthly, again, we kind of take that. We've, we've taken that from you. Mm -hmm. You know, every newsletter we send out, we'll get a handful full of people here. that opt out. But but that's fine. I mean, if your wedding was three years ago and you're done right. hearing yeah. about Elite Entertainment, that's that's fine. Right. You know, same here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other any other features you want to touch on, Mike, before we move to some of the other things that you use in office? Um, you know, I, I think those are some of the key things is the automated emails, the fact that you're able to, you know, send electronic contracts, uh, the whole port. I call it the portal thing where they, you know, what is y'all's separate URL, Mike? We're bundjplanning.com, like for the planning I forget. I think yeah. it's Elite Entertainment Planning or Planner.com. Yeah. So, it's one of those things I copy and paste in emails all here. the time, so yeah. I never even have to type it out. The, I mean, obviously, let the DJ allowing the DJs to see their schedule online is a critical thing, too. I mean, critical. I've literally sat on the beach and rescheduled an event, you know, mm -hmm. two weeks away. I have an assistant email me and say, Mike, I'm sorry I accepted that gig, but now I can't work it. Yeah. I can look it up, reassign it, text somebody and say, mm -hmm. hey, I just I just scheduled you to a gig on September 7th. Is that yeah. OK? And they'll text me back and go, yeah, I just checked it out. It's fine. Yeah. Boom. That saved me, you know, mailing them information or calling them with mm -hmm. the vital. So that to me is is the big lifesaver for everyone involved. Well, I you also know? think, Mike, what's what's important is one, not only can the DJ see all their shows, they can see all, all the clients planners that they've inputted. And then, you know, maybe more importantly than anybody, especially like you and, and, and Dom and the guys in your office that are booking shows is that they can go in there and blackout dates. 
you know, there's yeah, nothing... you know, listen, as a business owner, I don't love that because right, right. I, I wish DJs didn't black, black off right. and block off that many dates. But yes, it is. It's something that's essential. You need to Pretty know cool. when your DJs need time away and have vacations and blah, blah, blah. So it is it's a very simple, easy thing to do in DJ Van Planner. Yeah. And I mean, I can't tell you how much time that has saved me from looking at a calendar. Oh, Randy's open. At first, I got to call or email Randy. Then I got to get a response back. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. if I look at it and he's blocked off, he's blocked off. Right. And it's not just time. It's it's you 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 don't have the conflict where you book somebody and then the guy says, oh, no, I needed that time off. Yeah. You know, he's got to you know, my DJs know it's their responsibility to block the date off. I don't care if we're talking about three years in advance. If you mm-hmm. haven't blocked it off, mm-hmm. I consider you open. So, you know, the DJs know Same it's here. their responsibility to block things off. Yeah. I have that discussion about every yeah. other month at our monthly meeting exactly and and, and again through that portal folks that don't use it i mean it's really cool because it shows the bride and groom a countdown to their event they can plan their music um you know so the portal really is not only for mike and i to log in and book shows but it's also for the clients to log in and and see the payments they've made or make payments see their electronically signed contract it's really just a great feature but so you just mentioned music planning that's and, I, I, and I I think that's a good segue Me to too. something Damn, that I just I beat you to it I beat you to yeah, the you segue um, to something that you and I both need to try out yep. and it's something that Brian Bonacici talked about when he was on this and that's Vibo mm-hmm. so you tell share with the listeners yeah. what you know about Vibo. I, I don't will. think you and I both know enough about it. We probably should have Brian dial back in. But right. what do you know about about Vibo? So l- l- let me say this first and foremost, Mike. Um, so the guy that started Vibo, Michael Mahler, uh, is from Israel, and I think he's re- about to relocate to the United States. Anybody that is committed enough to come see my redneck ass twice from Israel <laughs> and Mike, he saw Mike as well. This oh, guy, oh, hold on. He saw me. He didn't see my ass. Well, I want to know why this true. guy saw your no, ass. He saw, he, saw, he saw your pretty jersey we'll, face. we'll get into that in, after the, uh, the outro of this. That'll anyway, be he, he, came, um, he came from Israel and made like a tour of multiple DJ offices. Remember this, Mike? This was yeah, a I year do. or more ago probably. Yeah. Uh, saw Mike, saw myself, saw some other guys up, up, uh, Northeast and maybe Pennsylvania and some areas, um, described the product at that time. It was, it was, you know, still really early, um, showed it to me things I did and didn't like, I mean, listen, I, I've, I've demoed it, but I haven't demoed it enough with a real person to, to really switch over completely. Now, um, as them being a sponsor of the show, obviously you and I are going to dig more into this. And I think that you and I have had enough discussions with Michael Mahler and with Brian Bonacici to know that this is a totally viable tool. I mean, Bonacici, all his guys down in Florida, they all use it. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, what I do know about it is one, it's an app format, which is, as you know, and you listen to just as many webinars and podcasts and see Sonny from Wedding Wire Talk, everything's mobile. So the app right. is critical. V-I-B-O is what it is if you want to download it. Um, the fact that you can, that pretty much any song is on there, you know, that you don't have to necessarily upload your database like we do on DJ Event Planner. Um, it's pulling from the API of YouTube. So pretty much every song is on YouTube. Uh, and then I think one of the other things that he really sells is that once people do this, this planner, you can export that file and drop it in Serato and it automatically creates your crate for that party. Right. Like, and, and even, you know, which is pretty badass. Pretty that's, badass. that's a time and saver. I mean, totally. I've gotten to the point where I, I sometimes spend 15, 20 minutes just putting 100%. songs into a playlist. If you know, the client has an extensive music list. So, you know, that can be a nice time saver, no doubt. So those are the things I feel like are the highlights, you know, without go- going too much into an infomercial for it. I, I mean, I definitely think it's worth checking out. You'll hear an ad during this podcast at some point that that mentions uh, our promo code. So check it out. Check it out. And, yeah, and, not only right. He, so Michael has offered our listeners a promo code, mm-hmm. which saves them money. Yes. I understand. Yeah, it yes. does. It saves yeah. them money. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and then Mike and I, you know, over the next few months, especially as insane as it's going to get from this weekend till Christmas are going to get some of our people or our clients using it and, and give a more in-depth full podcast on this. Right. Very good. Very good. Um, so Mike, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, just a couple other things that I use. And I'm, I'm curious if you guys use them. Um, look, main thing, the other tab that I always have open is QuickBooks online. Do you guys use that or, or a similar product? 
I use QuickBooks. I don't use QuickBooks online. Okay. I use QuickBooks to uh, pay my DJs. Correct. I run payroll through QuickBooks. Same. Um, but then everything else I just pay online through my bank. Okay. If that makes sense. Right. It's that, probably a double system that I shouldn't be using, but it's just I'm so used to doing it that way that I'm, I'm well, you know. I, I, I'll say that do 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 does your QuickBooks, the non-online version, and your uh, online bank talk to each other? No. So that's I, I would say if, if I was going to do and again, making the switch from QuickBooks to QuickBooks online is nothing more than just paying a twenty five dollars a month or whatever it costs. hundred percent. I would recommend this to anybody because pretty much any major bank and even some not major banks like we, we have BB&T down here in the south, which is. I don't know, branch banking and trust. I think it actually started in my hometown. Even that bank syncs up to QuickBooks Online. So I, when I want to reconcile, they just talk to each other, and then I can see what's missing or, you know, what I didn't input. That I In other words, which checks haven't cleared yeah. and that type of thing? Okay. Yeah. I mean, literally, it's it's a click of a button, and, and you can reconcile within minutes. Right. Now, I'm not going to be – I'm not going to lie to you. There are many financial things that – I don't do one just for time. So a lot of the reconciliation, and the, again, this is the beauty of the QuickBooks Online version, is that uh, I have my accountant. She has a login as well. So mm-hmm. she can actually go online and see everything in my QuickBooks in terms of doing my reconcile, doing my 1099s at the end of the year. Here we go with this shit. Um, and then <laughs> and then uh, mainly is is taxes. Right. Um, or, or even budgeting. You know, if I want to say like, well, Madeline, why, why was this? We'll have a phone call once a month. Right. Madeline, why? W- let's talk about why this month was so much worse than August of last year. And she'll be like, well, you know, your payroll was higher. Um, you had more expenses because you bought. It looks like you bought something for three thousand dollars. And uh, and then I can and she'll go. It was a guitar center or something. And I'll be like, oh, I did. I bought that whatever controller and right. speaker. So. I don't know. I think that's one of the best parts of it is that I don't have to, when I was using QuickBooks, which I was on for years, I'd have to export the whole file, send it to them. By the time they've seen it, I've already made 10 other transactions or something right. when it's online. And it's especially when it's talking to your bank account, it's awesome. Right. Uh, and again, going back to, to one of the other tabs, I mean, I'm looking at my tabs right here that are open now. Uh, just like you mentioned, online banking. If I, I, There are things I do and don't like about it. The positives of it are just in terms of paying bills and paying my DJs made things a lot easier. The negatives are I don't get to get a lot of chatter time like I did on Mondays back in the day. Right. But also the negative was I never got anything done on Mondays. Right. Because guys right. would come in and be like. You mean chatter time with your DJ? Yeah. They'd come because in Because they get don't check. need to report or, okay. No, it's because all you do online deposit. banking. Right. Yeah. It's right. direct right. deposit now. But they would. Yeah. Come I in. still haven't done the direct deposit. Oh, and that's okay. not the main reason. But I do love that. I mean, not yeah. every one of our DJs stops in. But I, but I love Monday afternoon. Right. When I'm done with payroll and I get to see, you know, six to eight to ten guys in the busy season yeah. coming in. And even if they only stay for a couple minutes and tell me their war stories from the weekend, right. I don't know. Right. man I, I as to me that's still an endearing part of the part of my week so well, sometimes guys you know. would come in you know i mean we we djs aren't normal there's something wrong with us i mean we they have the we have these big personality and they would come of in of course and, and they would ear f me for an hour right you won't right. believe this picture right because no like, event oh. is ever in the middle it's either the worst <laughs> event ever yes. or the greatest event ever yes, but yes. i mean that's just to me that's just part of it there's and i have no you know average. it's like a it's like the fish stories you know i mean you don't yes. catch a fish this no, big. No, no. you catch a fish you, this big off and, screen yeah exactly and uh, and you know i and but i share <laughs> in the same stories i mean i had one this past weekend that was pretty rough and you know the more i've told that story the worse that event has yeah. gotten so um yeah it, it is what it I is Saw I you made, or part. I saw I never saw the initial post. I caught something that said tonight's much better than last. So I never. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. I so I I, <laughs> I I bounced back. Let's put yeah. it that way. The next night was pretty was a pretty banging gig. But That's hey, nice. listen, we all have our, our tough ones. Yeah. Or maybe I'm the one who I'm the only one no, who will publicly no. admit Come to it. But no, I'll yeah. admit it. I'm with you, man. Well, um. Anything else, Mike, that you want to mention? So, yeah, there's two that really help us in the sales aspect that I think are worth just mentioning really quick. ZipWhip is is a a program or a a service that we signed up for a while back that allows us to um, text people from our landline. And this way, because for a while, Dominic and Chris were texting people from their personal cell phones because clients, you know, like to be text messaged. And we have not had any challenge with with, uh, text messaging salespeople or 
or or clients in the sales process, I should say. And uh, ZipWhip is is a great service. It looks like it's coming from our landline, uh, which also means on our website we have our our landline, and if somebody's looking on their phone, they it can says, click it and send us a text. Right. So they can text directly. So we like that one. And then Snap Engage is the one that we use on our website. That's the one where the little window pops up yep. when when you're on our website. I'm literally and, taking notes on these. Cause yeah, and that's <laughs> one. I mean, I talk about this extensively at the workshop, yes, phdjworkshop.com, and I show examples and go into really in depth about what I love about Snap Engage. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time here doing it, but that's one of the ones that that I I swear by. I love that service. Love it. I, I've written be, both of these down before, Mike, and and just you know sometimes it's diff, a little bit different for me uh, as we've talked about in the past because of just being the only person here and manning the actual um, yeah zip whip or the text or what's the text snap one engage is, snap, snap engage is uh, is no there's no point in signing up for that unless you're going to be. Or somebody's to going be to be online, or you or somebody, yeah. you know, for a consistent part of the day. That's right. I mean, it doesn't have to be 24 hours, but, right. you know, if you only pop into your office for a half hour a day, then it's not worth having a service like that. But if you spend a significant t- amount of time at your desk and doing stuff, then I think that service is great. And we still, you know, it's not as novel as it was a number of years ago when we signed up because a lot of websites have this type of thing now, mm-hmm. but we still get people who go, oh, is somebody really there? Yes, mm-hmm. we are. And, and we can answer. And we've literally close deals on that Damn. snap engage like that conversation leads to okay great we'll send me a contract so it's rare but it, it's it does happen so i love both of those services the only other few things i wanted to talk about um mike and, and you know we can we can certainly make this into a part two before we wrap up and and mike and i use this to go back and forth about podcast notes and upcoming shows is google, google docs you know if you're not using that it's a great um uh, tool to use especially if you have things that need to be shared with your staff and and they can make edits on it you can make edits on it and it all happens in real time so google docs or google sheets which is their uh, excel kind of version um, I never used that until you and I started sharing the uh, the podcast. But there is a, definitely a, there was one time where I was making a change to it, and you were watching yeah, it, and you could literally dude. see. I didn't realize it was that real time. It's nuts. Uh, and speaking of <laughs> sharing stuff with your staff, I just did this recently. Uh, somebody had advised that I set up a private Facebook group right. for the elite entertainment uh, for the headliners yep. in Elite. Yeah. And uh, it's been a very cool, funny. I mean, obviously, I use it to communicate sometimes with the staff. Right. But it's also just a great place to vent and tell jokes and, you know, stuff that are internal and we don't meet and hang out as often as we do, but it's a great way to kind of, you know, cyberly do that. So uh, that's something if you have a staff and and you want to set something up like that, I think it's a cool thing. Or post a picture that maybe you're Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. (laughs) One of those. Exactly. Uh, um, (laughs) Yeah. Those are cool. And Dropbox, I think you and I both use that pretty Pretty much. I mean, do you use oh, that yeah. line for sharing yeah. or yeah. or just storing? Um, yeah. You know, l- things that don't need to be right there on your hard drive can be on the Dropbox. Right. Um, and then the other one that I've switched to. Uh, so I I used to use uh, Reminders. I think that comes with you know your phone and your your MacBook. But uh, I'm a huge fan of this uh, to do list Wonder List W U N D E R List Wonder List. Yeah, I remember you've talked about that in the past on here. That's pretty cool. I do like that one a lot. Um, like if I started a list right now on things that you and I needed to do for the podcast, I could share that list with you. Um, right. And it, again, it's got a mobile version. And then the final thing uh, that we used a little bit, but I think that it, it's my guys are much older and they're not as tech savvy maybe uh is slack i know bonus cc because he has a really young staff s-l-a-c-k uh, yep it's a it's slack. an app but it's it's basically like what you were saying with the facebook thing uh, yeah even when i was out at bpm Su- supreme out in san diego and they have you know 30 40 people that work there it's basically when you want to text the whole company without texting them you right. know what i mean it's coming through slack so it's not going right. to your phone number and again, you can opt out of conversations and things like that. You can start sub threads, you know, let's have a music slack or, um, you know, um, who's available this date slack or whatever. Okay. Um, we use that a cool little stuff. bit, but those are, um, those are some things guys that keep us running, keep Mike running as smooth as can be. Um, you know, in the comments, please leave some other items that you're using. If you like a certain CRM, which is customer relationship manager, I guess we didn't really touch on that, but you know, I've looked at 17 hats. I've looked at. Well, isn't that what 
isn't that what DJ Van Planner is, really is? 100%. 100%. Yeah. It, it is with more bells and whistles for DJs right. because at the end of the day, it was created for DJs. Yeah. Right. By DJs. By DJs. For DJs. For DJs by DJs. Yeah. Very good. Um, but we're guys, pushing a half hour here. Yeah, dude. we are. That's it. Yeah. Right at half hour. We hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I am super stoked about uh, the next big thing coming up is, is Mobile Beat. Once everybody gets through wedding season and holidays and spending all their money at Christmas, start to save up and come see uh, Mike in uh, Las Vegas in March. Uh, and we will both be there doing our workshop. I don't know if I'm on the roster for the actual conference, but I will 100% be there and uh, enjoying myself either way. And then uh, the workshop. Do you want to make a public plea right now to uh, Jake and Ryan uh, about <sighs> about speaking? Do you yeah, want to? I mean, what do I, I don't know what I need to do here. <laughs> Would you, you want to submit your proposal for a I've seminar right here? And I've, we'll, I've already yeah, done, done it. it? I, I think okay. I've submitted multiple topics. Well, uh, maybe if the listeners mm -hmm. really want Joe oh, on the on the it. roster, you can reach out to the people at Mobile Beat yes. and say, "Hey, <laughs> I'm on the fence about coming. If if yes. Joe Bunn were speaking, wow. I would definitely." So, if anybody wants to hear Joe Bunn in March, uh huh. Um, RB reach out, at reach out. Oh, no. <laughs> you giving out Ryan's? <laughs> I wasn't gonna go that. You want a cell phone too? No, nah, I'm not gonna not do that. Going. But um, yeah, let, just mention to Mobile Beat that you would love to hear Joe speak, and yes. and maybe if if uh, Mobile Beat gets enough, <laughs> you know, enough people interested. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sign, Thank you. Sign, cyber petition and get Joe on They're the roster. Cyber petition. I'd love to. I'd love to speak at Mobile Beat. I would love you, to hear you speak again. Me too, man. I, I always love to see you. And, and Mike's gonna be out there. Workshops gonna be there. PhDJWorkshop.com. Uh, Instagram. Earn your PhDJ. And um, that's about it, Mike. That's a good one, Joe. Have a good one. You I'll too, talk brother. to you next week. Peace. Ciao.